This time on Boneyard Revivals, it's the return of the Budget Build 350, where she gets a lot more horsepower, baby. Raise hell, praise Dale. So in one of our previous videos, we put together a set of 906 small block Chevy Vortex cylinder heads and you're probably wondering, well, what are they going on? As you all know, we're trying to get our 1985 square body Chevy ready for hot rod power tour and I decided it was time to rip the budget build 350 back out of the truck and give it some horsepower upgrades. So we have our finished 906 Vortec heads to replace our swirl port heads. We also went ahead and picked out a really nice cam and lifter set off the of Summit and also got ourselves a Vortex specific intake manifold to throw on our budget build 350. So we ripped the 350 out of the truck and took it over to Joe's over at the machine shop to give this 350 some more ponies. Alrighty, it's camshaft time. Uh, I'm gonna go over the cam that we actually went. This was more of a budget cam. This is a Summit brand racing cam. Uh, the part number is SUM-1785. It's a hydraulic flat tappet. We're putting another hydraulic flat tappet in it. The advertised duration is 274 at 274 and the lift is 450 at 450. Um, and the LSA, otherwise known as the lobe separation angle, is a 106. Now for the duration in the lift, you guys are like, okay, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a decent cam, you know, it's got, it's pretty good specs. The LSA being a 106, half of you just went, why? Basically, this is Summit Brands Racing Cam um, that's supposed to be relevant to uh, like, like a thumper. Uh, basically, it's supposed to be like a really nice idle um, in the sense that it's really choppy. And what your lobe separation angle actually is, is how uh, the, the degrees and um, how far away your uh, exhaust valve is away from your intake valve. Um, the tighter you have that, the more overlap you have. And basically what overlap is, is the amount of time that the exhaust valve and the intake valve are open at the same time. Um, stuff that has a much tighter lobe separation angle is usually really, really choppy because it creates a scavenging effect within the engine. Um, a 106 LSA is used in a lot of race applications. The reason why I went with a 106 LSA for this engine was because um, it's going to be a two and a half inch exhaust uh, true duels all the way out the back with two and a half inch uh, Dynamax race bullets and I wanted this thing to just sound absolutely insane. So that's why we went with this cam. Could have went with a bigger cam with bigger lift and bigger duration but again the application is that this engine is going into the truck for now. Didn't want to go too crazy and go too big. This is going to be a nice good cam. It should have some good low end torque. Uh, we're basically going to clean everything up. We got to lube it up and then we're going to we're going to slam her in the hole after we check our cam bearings and all that stuff. But I just wanted to go over the cam specs with you just to give you an idea of uh, what we're rolling with here. But I'm pretty excited about that. That should be pretty cool. All right, another thing we're going to go over quick too is our intake manifold. This is the Summit brand intake manifold that we talked about before. We actually did a video on it. If you want to see that, I'll link that up here um, where we did a kind of an overview uh, on it real quick. This is actually specifically the Vortec intake manifold. As you can see, the way that the bolts are for our Vortec heads. More of an RPM uh, uh, performer performer RPM uh, style from the Edelbrock line. Um, should be pretty should be pretty stout and should work. We also have a one inch carb spacer that's a four hole that's gonna go on top of this, which is gonna increase our plenum volume, which will also help it out too a little bit. Um, so yeah, basically that's all of our goodies besides the Vortec heads, which we're gonna be doing, throwing the cam in first, and then we're gonna be throwing on our Vortec heads. And uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. So what just happened there is we just found a, uh, our front cam bearing was wiped out, so we're throwing cam bearings in it now too. <laughs> it happens, good thing we found it though. See how on the new bearings here, they actually have it stamped, if I can find it. The dash, dash three right at the end, these actually have to go in. A specific location so your dash three check it there it can go in three or four and they're all every single one of these are like that so but so that stuff does matter and we're gonna make sure that we get it in there right and we're gonna have new cam bearings which will solve another issue
Now you see that, you can look underneath there and you can see the hole is. Yep, you can actually see it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, how it has to be fully in there. Well, because basically the oil comes through there and then yep. it comes through that hole and then goes around the camera. Lubing up our camshaft here. Kind of a crucial step in a hydraulic flat tap is making sure that you got it all lubed up. Oh, come on. You have to leverage that now because the back is falling yeah. and you have a lot of extra weight in the back. So you. I wonder if I can almost reach in. And... No, you're not really. Oh yeah, nice and smooth, eh? Why is it? Is there? Are you? Is it pushing out? And is that all the lube within the bearing? That's all the lube getting cut off. Remember, there's only yeah. that two thousandths or three thousandths clearance, so everything, you know, when I, that, that lube was probably a hundred thousandths thick on there, so it's yeah. just cutting it all off. Well, is it actually, is there, is there enough on it where it's actually pushing it back out of the bearing and that's why it's going back, or is that you with your, the motion of weight? No, you're see how it filled now? that chamfered hole with all the lube? Yep. It just cut it off. You can okay. see, see now there's only a little just a shine to it because yep. it cut it all off. Okay. That that's why you don't you don't load the there, yeah, there's no reason to, to cake it an eighth and eighth inch thick because it's cutting it all off. Anyway. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we have a double roller timing set here. This isn't the one that actually came off this motor as you guys saw earlier. We actually had too much slack in it. So we're gonna be using the one that came out of my dad's engine. I'm assuming we're gonna put our uh, our gear that goes on our crankshaft on first. Correct. Because that side chamfer right here is supposed to. It's the chamfer here. Yeah. Versus you show them the other side and say there's no chamfer. No, it's not. And you have the part number there. And you actually have your dot there too, which helps you line it up. I said beat it till the sound changes. Did the sound change? It did. Hand tight, right? Yep. Line your dots. Line the dots up. And then you'll take take it back off, and then then include the chain. <laughs> okay. So there's that. There you go. See? Did I go too far? See now I went too far. One. Something like that. Okay, all right. I mean, that's that's probably gonna be as close as you're gonna get because you're gonna have a little bit of the slot back and forth, right? Yeah, it's not pulled on the cam yet either, so it'll okay. get counter. I'm gonna put the bolts in. Okay. What you do is you go 50 before. So I backed up. If you didn't catch that, I backed up mm -hmm. from my 50. And you always go past it and then come up. And what that's doing is taking the slop out of the chain. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're at 50. Okay. And our number is what? Was that 59? Yep, 59 is right next to 60. Okay. At least that's how they taught me in school, right? Mm -hmm. There's a marker behind you, right on the bench. We're riding it on the bench? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's just 59? Yep, 59. And we're going to rotate past our peak lift, which is right there, and come back down to 50. And you're going to write the next measurement down. Try not to blow it there. It's like the cam bearing. Try to Work it in our next measurements. 145. 145. Add them together. Yep, and then you divide it by two and it should come up with the right number. No, no, do it right there on the workbench. Oh, you want me to do the math right yes. there? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Got enough fingers and toes for that? <laughs> 204. Okay, divided by two. Divided by two. What should that be? I can do that in my head. 102. Mm. So you're four good. degrees advanced off your 106. Okay. Which is exactly where I fucking put it, so oh, you're done! Wow, so it's... Wasn't so hard, was it? No, no, it wasn't. The math part is just what... I was never a good math student. No, you, you, <laughs> you, you add those numbers together and divide it in half, and that's your 102. Okay. Well, just to make it look like I, I actually... Are we going to take a Yeah, absolutely. So, anyway, so that's as simple as it gets. It's not yeah, as it's scary. It's not rocket science. It's like not it. rocket it's science, you just need $200 worth of tools. <laughs> <laughs> But everybody thinks I mean, it's old scary. One thing we're going to do, we threw it together before, but we're going to pull 
these bolts out one by one and we're going to put, put some Loctite on them and in the threads here just to make sure they're locked down and then we're also going to torque them. I think the torque rating is at, I think it's 20 foot pounds. We're going to do it at 22, that's where the torque wrench is set up at. Just make sure that they're locked down they ain't going nowhere because it would really suck to lose these. So we got our hydraulic flat tap at lifters here. These are going to be our brand new ones. Uh, we're cleaning them up, wiping them off, then we're throwing in some of the uh, the break and lube that we, it, that's actually on our cam. We're throwing it on the very bottom to try to help mate the the cam lobe to the bottom of the the flat tap at lifter. And then we're taking some of this oil over here and we're lubing up the sides of our lifter and then also the lifter board to try to help that because that needs to be smooth and it also needs to be able to spin in there. Like as you can see that spins these actually spin while they're in that bore and we want to make sure they're all lubricated good so we don't wipe out any lifters so that's what we're going to do we're going to do the rest of these get them slammed in there and uh be in pretty good shape so we got our last one got it gooped on the end drop it in that should be in all the way make sure it actually wants to spin oh nope wasn't in all the way and it spins. Good. Good, good, good. All right, so I think I said it before, but timing chain, set, double roller, that's all in. The cam's in there, and we have our 906 Vortex cylinder heads that we're going to be dropping on here. Wiped off our deck surface, all that stuff, so in our brand new gaskets are right there. So going to be flopping them on, taking our cylinder heads and just kerplunk, um, and we'll be doing all that next. All right, so we got cylinder head number one on. We're over here doing a second one. I figured I'd show you what we're doing. For the individual uh, head bolt holes, we're taking our uh, Loctite head bolt and water jacket sealant, and I'm actually putting it on the end of this straw here. This is like on the end of the uh, brake clean, um, like one of those straws. And what we're doing here is we're taking a sealant and we're doing like the first few threads that are actually um, in the block. And then we're also gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our, ow, I just hit my elbow off a freaking roller rocker. Um, then we're going to take our actual head bolts and we're going to do all the threads. Um, but first we're going to do the block, then we're doing the heads just so they're sealing on both so we can make sure that all of our coolant passages and whatnot are all blocked up and then we'll be ready to go. So I'm going to finish this up. All right, so we got all of our head bolts with sealant on the threads and we also are taking a little bit of oil, dropping it right on there. And the reason why is when it actually goes to drop into the cylinder head like right here, um, it's supposed to stop uh, or to reduce the friction so you actually get more of an accurate uh, torque when you actually go to torque it with the uh, torque wrench, wherever the hell that went over there. Um, but yeah, so at this point now we have our deck surface. We're going to take a little bit of the sealant here and we're going to seal right here and right here. That's going to ensure that we won't get any oil leaks or anything like that. So we're going to do it on the deck surface side. Then we're going to place our head gasket on. And then we're going to do it on the top side of that head gasket as well. All right, we got our sealant on. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to have to drop the camera here in a second. One thing I will say when you're setting your head gaskets on, usually these are felt pro gaskets. Usually the lines and where it's actually stamped um, on it here. It, that's usually it's the, uh, this, this side goes up. Uh, sometimes some of these gaskets will actually tell you which side goes up. But you could tell by looking at this one that this one is the side that goes up. So we'll go ahead, we'll place it on. It's got to go over our dowel pins here if i can get it lined up there's that one so just kind of press on there we go i'll go ahead and i'm just gonna kind of give that a little half press there do the same thing on the other side and now we're ready to drop our cylinder head on actually got a little far ahead of myself here we're still going to go the top side of the gasket here too with with that just to make sure it seals up right okay so they're all started but basically you have to go from the center and work your way out so it's center over down over back over to this one and it's kind of a circular rotation then back up to this one this second one from the inside from the center line that one then over to this one then up to that one then this one this one that one that one and then that one that one and that one and we're gonna do it in a sequence of three 25 foot pounds 45 and then 65 and we should be good so let's torque them out all right so we just finished them finished all of them doing them on 25 now we're gonna bump it up to 45 
here we go, and we'll go around and do them all again. All right, so we got our torque wrench set to 65 here, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do, run them down the last time. We're gonna double check them, triple check them again, but usually like doing it this way. I know I saw it. Okay. All right, so now they're all torqued down to 65 foot pounds. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over all of them. Now the torquing sequence is already done. And when the way that we do this, it's not gonna matter, but I'm pretty much just gonna go straight down the line of the head. It doesn't matter at the end because they should already be torqued to 65 foot pounds. This is just double checking that they're actually uh, torqued to 65. All right, so our cylinder heads are on and they're torqued. Next thing we're gonna do, and it's supposed to be in the uh, Vortec video, which is gonna be in the Vortec video and also uh, the engine build video. Um, but we're gonna be putting in our three eights uh, rocker studs in. Um, as you remember, we cut these down and basically it's going to be the same process we're going to be using the Loctite because some of these are coolant passages. So we're going to be putting a little Loctite on these threads and then also inside on these threads. And then we're going to uh, light tighten them down. I believe these are going to be up to 50 foot pounds since they're uh, technically a 7 16 uh, end. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll tighten them in and we'll get all of them in. And then we're basically going to start assembling our head with our rocker arms, which are somewhere in this mess of all my stuff just blown apart on Joe's bench. Sorry, Joe. And uh, <laughs> yeah, then we'll uh, we'll take it from there. Alrighty, our rocker studs are officially in. And that's gonna be a really, really nice upgrade compared to just the pressing ones. It's gonna help us with the bigger lift cam and all that good stuff. That was something that we decided to go with from the get-go, but now they're in and they're torqued. We end up torquing them to uh, 55 foot-pounds. I did, I did, uh, 25 foot pounds first just to set them all and then we went back over and did them up to 55 um just because i wanted to make sure that they were in there and like i said we have a sealant you can actually see remnants i'm gonna get in there and wipe the rest of that sealant up just so it's all off and not getting in here um but yeah they're all good and ready to go one thing i like to do here with our intake gaskets is actually line them up and see how they fit on the cylinder heads just to see how much flow we're going to be knocking off and they're actually not bad i would like to take like a razor blade and like cut that a little bit just so that matches a little better um so they fit on the heads pretty good uh problem begins when uh when we go technically it'd be this side and the felt pro side goes faces the intake we line up our bolt holes here and uh oof da. that is no bueno that is no bueno. I think, uh, I'm thinking we can't have that. So I think, I think this is gonna get ground down and we're gonna gasket match the intake to the gasket at least. Um, so then, you know, it's not gonna impede flow or anything because if it's not gonna be able to reach 400 horsepower, it will not be because of lack of airflow due to the fact that I was too lazy to, uh, like port match the heads and stuff. I didn't want to do a full blown port job just cause it just takes a lot of time, but I will at least gasket match um, the intake to the gasket. And then the gasket obviously fits well to the head because like I said, if we're not gonna be able to reach the full 400 horsepower, it's gonna be because of lack of cam and lack of cylinder head. Um, not because of lack of uh, airflow because the gasket doesn't fit right. So we're going to fix that. <laughs> So, well, Joe put the anti-seize in there, and he also put the RTV in our keyway. Good job, Joe. You did a good job today. Would you like gold star? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what to tell you there, but. <laughs> so you just slide it on there. Get it lined up with the keyway. And get it started. And then, let's see, it's been a hot minute since I've done this. But, if I remember correctly, this actually twists in first, right? Yep. You thread it in just like your bolt. So I once again completely jumped the gun because we're a little goofy. There's a whole lot more going on here now. And you're like, wow, we missed a bunch. Uh, basically, we got our 1.5 uh, rockers because we're going to reuse these um, along with the uh, the fulcrum balls. Those are all in there. They're all good. They all cleaned up nice. So they are reusable. And basically, we're actually going to set our valves. Um, kind of hopping around here. You're probably wondering why the intake's actually on. Um, we are going to fix that. And we're actually going to um, gasket more of a gasket match more than it is a port match. Um, the intake 
to the gasket because the gaskets fit nice against uh, the heads. So we're kind of, there's something going on down in there. We actually have dye and whatnot on uh, that. And then there's a little bit of RTV to help us with the placement of the gasket on the backside of the intake so we can actually um, get an overlay where the intake actually sits um, with the gasket so we can do that. But while we're waiting, we're pretty much gonna throw the whole thing back together. We set at the top of uh, the TDC and uh, basically we're gonna start setting setting our valves here. So a lot of you are probably kind of bummed out that we're keeping the original uh, 1.5 rockers. Um, but the big reason why it's kind of tough and the reason why we end up doing this was obviously cost point uh, with the overall cost of putting these heads back together um, in, in serviceable use. And basically what it came down to with the call on these rockers is, yeah, we could go and we can get uh, roller rockers. But the only problem is, is that these rockers are actually self-aligning. You can kind of see that with these grooves here, basically that actually kind of keeps the rocker aligned on the valve tip. Um, so basically, if you actually wanted to get roller rockers that would work, you have to get the self-aligning ones. Um, and on top of that too, um, because I like to spend money, uh, you probably have seen these Elderbrock valve covers on something else before um, when we half assembled uh, the Rodnock 350 uh, that's now sitting in the cutlass because we mocked it up. Um, if you actually look at these bad boys, these are actually valve cover adapters from the center bolt design, because that's what that guy is. And we're gonna be throwing these guys on, which is basically, there's bolts that go through that hole, and then they move your actual bolt holes to bolt down uh, the older style valve covers. I paid way too much money for these just to make those fit, but it, um, when it comes to spending money to make something look completely badass, I think it's completely worth it. <laughs> So yeah, I spent the money on those. And basically another thing too that you have to worry about was I actually took one of the original, uh, like a like a regular roller rocker. That's for a regular application. That's the non-self-aligning one. It don't fit. Like it don't fit. Like we're not talking like, ooh, yeah, you could probably grind those and make it fit. No, 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 it don't fit. <laughs> so for now, we're gonna keep our stock 1.5 uh, rockers and they'll work and they're gonna last forever too um, but that's probably the only thing within this entire upgrade that if I could have spent more money on I would have went with like 1.6 uh, full roller rockers just because um, it would have been a nice upgrade but these are gonna do just fine and it didn't cost me like four or five hundred bucks because they're actually that much money so we're setting our valves um, I pretty much have every single one of them done except cylinder number two the way that we're doing this, there is multiple ways to set your valves. This is the way that me and Joe discussed and the way that Joe showed me. So this is the way we're doing it. Plus we have our timing wheel and everything here, which makes it a whole lot easier. Basically, the way that we started out here is we're doing it within the firing order of the engine. Um, just the way that everything happens. So we started off with number one. Now what we did is we set our um, indicator to zero which would basically be top dead center of piston number one now if you didn't know there's actually technically two top dead centers for every single piston and the reason why and try to explain that to you is basically when um you have your compression stroke and your what we like to call overlap stroke compression stroke basically both of your valves are supposed to be shut so they're not going to be moving and basically your pistons coming up and that's when your spark plug in the in the spark plug hole on the cylinder head it's going to ignite and basically create um, the explosion in the actual uh, combustion chamber so basically the pistons coming up it's compressing your air and fuel charge your uh, your spark plug is igniting that charge and sending your piston back down and obviously your um, exhaust valve is opening and it's going out through the exhaust port on the head, through your headers, uh, exhaust manifold, whatever's on your engine. And then there's also what they call the overlap stroke where the piston is not actually firing. Um, and that happens, so basically there's two different cycles of the actual piston. So one time it's coming up, the explosion's happening and it's sending it back down, and then it's actually coming back up and it's not actually firing because another cylinder is firing, if I explained that correctly and that made sense. I think it did. At this point, my brain's melting out of my ears. 
I hope it made sense. So basically we had to set it at TDC on the compression stroke in order to set our valves because our, um, our actual valves need to be closed. After we set it to zero, right, and on the compression stroke, we're taking our stamp steel rockers and we're setting them to zero lash. And what zero lash is, is the relationship of your rocker arm to the actual tip of the valve. So this is your rocker, that's the tip of your valve. This movement up and down is considered your lash, right? So if you tighten your nut down, the tighter you make that nut, the tighter it's going to hold the rocker to the stud up against your push rod and also the tip of your valve. When it comes to a point like back here, on piston number four on our intake valve, you grab it and move it. It does not move up off of that because it is set to zero lash. But on top of that, again, this gets more complicated as we go. We're doing it. Now you, talk, you can talk to a million different people and they're gonna tell you a million different things. But basically the way that we're doing this is we're taking it to zero lash, checking to make sure that it's at zero lash and then doing three quarters of a turn with the wrench and socket. At number one, at zero, obviously it doesn't read zero because uh, the point that we're at on our indicator, we're ready to, uh, we just got done doing number seven, so it's actually set. But on this wheel, it goes 360 degrees. When you're at zero, you will be at TDC on number one within your firing order. The firing order on a small block Chevy is one eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. Remember it. If you have to go buy the David Freiberger shirt, do it. Honestly, I think I'm going to. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably grab my, we're getting out of hand. I need to remember to order that shirt later. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, so when we did, so when we did number one, it was at zero. The, your degree wheel was at zero. Then it went to 90 for number eight. So that's one eight. When you move to number four, it went to 180. When you went to number three, it went to 270. And then when you went to, because remember one, eight, four, three, six. When you move to number six, it went back to zero. Then after six, you go to five. Five would then be 90. Then from 90, when you move over to number seven, it's 180. And then when you finally come up to do number two, you set it to 270. Watch, this one's already at 270. And then we take our socket with our ratchet. And one thing I do wanna show you, I will actually back this up back to 180 because I wanna show you something. To make sure that you're actually on the right compression stroke per se, Let's move it back to 180. Okay, so there's roughly, there's 180. So let's just say we got done doing number seven. We're moving on to number two. I just told you the numbers before, we're at 180. We're gonna take it another 90 to 270. A trick to do to make sure that you're on the right stroke is press your fingers down on the end of your rockers. Basically that is going to indicate and tell you um, that you're on the right stroke because these should not move if they're on the, compression stroke. These push rods should not move while I hold them down while we move to the 270, which we're moving to the 270 now. And notice how my fingers are not moving. That's because our lifters and our push rods are not. Now we are at 270. These did not move. We can come over, grab our ratchet and socket. And we're now going to take these to zero lash. One thing that I like to do to help everything make faster, you have what they call your fulcrum ball in here. And basically that's kind of what the, the nut actually seats against to seat your rocker against your stud. What I like to do is I like to take the nut just to make it quicker and screw it all the way down until it looks like it's just about to touch that. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. One thing I do like to do too, and I highly recommend it because Joe kind of recommended it to me as well. When you go to actually check your lash, pull the socket off because if your socket's half sitting on the rocker, it will actually mess with you setting 
your zero lash. So that, we have a little bit of movement in there. I'm not sure if you can fully see that with the camera or not. See how we still have a little bit of movement there? So we gotta go a little bit tighter. It needs a touch more. Notice how I'm doing little tiny turns. You don't wanna overshoot it. You wanna make sure you get it as close as you possibly can to zero lash. Oh, that's pretty close. So we'll go just a touch more. Okay, that's definitely zero lash. And then we're gonna do our three quarters of a turn. Again, I put the ratchet at, I like to put the ratchet at six o'clock and we're gonna take it right to three o'clock. So there's a quarter turn, there's a half turn, there's three quarters of a turn. Boom, done. Now we're gonna move on to our other one. We're gonna take this down too. Another thing that I like to do too, just so you do not get yourself confused, is every time you complete a set for a cylinder, mark it. If you actually look down all of these, you can notice how there's Sharpie marks over all of them. Like there's Sharpie marks there, 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 and there. Mark every single one so if you walk away, you know where you're at. Just don't forget where you're at on your degree wheel because once you get past the point where you're back to zero after you pass uh, cylinder number, like when you get to cylinder number six, it does get a little confusing so be mindful of that. But like I said, we're already at this point where we're pretty much doing literally the last set and these will be done. Oh yeah. Now if I remember correctly, there is a seat point. It'll stop. Okay. All right, so our intake is set up. We actually scribed where our gasket's gonna sit. And basically we're actually gonna come in here and remove material to try to get it to fit up better and so the gasket doesn't impede the flow coming through the each individual intake port so shouldn't be losing no horsepower today and if anything might even gain a little bit okay so we're here with our intake manifold we have it roughly uh matched up here and uh ported we're gonna go over it and we're just going to touch it up for my first time porting a intake manifold uh it, it wasn't terrible i don't think i did too bad of a job so we're actually going to come in here we're going to smooth this out the rest of the way and finish her up sure that uh you know sorry dude no you're good you're I good just stalled your set down too you'll have to edit that one out nope 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 you're gonna be in the video for setting it down you're part of this too congratulations welcome to the club we're xing everything slowly and gently because if you look close enough you'll watch that you'll watch the move. actual oh okay it'll slip back and forth That's why I'm trying to lock it down real yeah. close. So I don't want to be the guy who like twists it to the mm -hmm. side. Now I'm assuming, cause I feel like, I, that's, this is kind of my opinion on these two. I'm not a very big fan of the Vortex specific intakes just because of the lack of center. Yeah, I support. don't really like it either. Okay. Which is another reason we put goop on it. Yes. Cause it may not push as hard and it gets a little thinner there kind mm -hmm. of. No, I don't really like it. Well, that was even my deal, too. Like, I thought that was something interesting that you mentioned before when it came to these cylinder heads when they first came out for race applications, that they actually bored them out to be the regular... To, to take, basically, what, the regular bolt hole for a regular small box Chevy, like... Because it, you were cheating with it. Yep. 
by using the Vortec head, but you had to use the old style intake. And that's how, like, what, like, tech inspectors basically would look and go, let's look at the intake manifold they go, bolts. Does and it they're have eight bolts or does it have 12 bolts? Yep. Bolts. And if, go, they, oh, if okay. they counted 12 bolts, they said, okay, it's good. Good enough. It can't be a Vortec head because a Vortec head only has eight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, she's officially a long block. Intake manifold is on. Bolts are torqued. Uh, valve covers are not fully on. We just have them sitting on right now, but uh, we even have um, everything set up for our timing. Um, so that's going to help us out when we go to fire it up and get the thing timed. Timing covers on. Oil pan is on. I just got to repaint all of it, but it's looking good. Now Robert is putting lube in the rocker arms because you do not want anything dry. Yeah, and basically when the lube though, it's the break in oil. Plus, it usually takes a second, don't it? Yep. Nope, oh, there it goes. Okay, she's there you go. Sure. Cool. All right, so we got our 355 small block Chevy back over from Joe's. Uh, like I said, we pretty much completely assembled the engine back to a long block. Everything's there, it's ready to go. One thing that you probably did notice is that, uh, remember before in the Vortec video, uh, for when we did the cylinder heads, if you watched that video, I said I grabbed some Chevy red orange. Yeah, it turns out I painted the block uh, Chevy orange. And back in that video too, I didn't do a fantastic job because I didn't have a lot of the, uh, the tools to make it happen. Like honestly, some of those parts on the block needed to be needle scaled in order to get it to clean up nicely. We're gonna be doing that today. Um, we're gonna clean it up and then we're gonna spray it. But yeah, it should be nice and shiny. Um, after we're done cleaning up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint the, uh, the whole block uh, just so it's matching colors. And I want it to look somewhat pretty in there. So, uh, yeah, but let's get to cleaning this thing up. And then, of course, we got to stab it in that guy. There it is. It's pretty much, yeah, it's, it's purdy. It's purdy. I like it. Um, so pretty much ended up painting up the whole block and whatnot. And we, I just kind of have everything set on here. The headers aren't going to be on it. The carbs not going to be on it. Um, and the, uh, the distributor is not going to be on it, but that's what she looks like. And I can't lie to you. Uh, when we did this about a year ago, uh, it didn't look this bitchin. It didn't, it looks a heck of a lot better now. And the best part is too, it, it makes ballpark, you know, 375, 400 horse. So, so that's pretty awesome. I'm really happy with it. So pretty much at this point, that's where we're going to end the engine build video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do appreciate it as always. Um, tune in next time because, you know, the power plant needs to be dropped back into, into the truck. So that's what you're going to be seeing next. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one. And you accidentally hit the neighbor. <laughs> no, I, I like stepped in a hole in the in the grass. <laughs>